everybody. It's me, Luna, the Zen Witch, getting my water the hell out of the way here. Um, with another unboxing video today, we are looking at another Lucy Cavendish deck, and that one, this one is the Fairy Tale Oracle. So another of her decks with uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffith, the wonderful artist that does these beautiful stylized big eyes. It says here, an enchanted oracle of initiation, mystery, and destiny. And the sides of the box, this is published by Blue Angel. And uh, out of Australia, designed in Australia, printed in China. 2016 is the copyright on this. 44 cards and guidebook set. Prince's Quest for True Love. Princesses dance in enchanted slippers. And girls emerge from the ashes of the fireplace, changed forever by the touch of a fairy grandmother's wand. You are holding a great treasure overflowing with life-changing magic. Grounded in the epic tradition and timeless wisdom of fairy tales, this oracle reveals the meanings and lessons behind stories like The Little Match Girl, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, and Hansel and Gretel. This magical deck will introduce you to undiscovered gems, unearthing tales of unsurpassed imagination to advise, inspire, and delight you. Every beautiful card offers trustworthy, compassionate, and uplifting guidance to help you navigate life's every peril, every promise, every enchantment. Illustrated by renowned fairy artist Jasmine Beckett Griffith, written by Lucy Cavendish, the fairy tale oracle teams the glory and wonder of the world's most beloved fairy tales with stunningly accurate messages, bringing you an oracle of outstanding depth and beauty. I like that they list um, the artist first and then... Lucy second. And again, this this looks to be, although, um, let's see here. I'm going to look in the front of the book because the other um, two decks, the Shapeshifters and Shadows and Light, were clearly um, aimed at a young audience. And you could tell that by the arm of the publishing company that put it out. But I don't think that was Blue Angel. This says, copyright 2016, just published by Blue Angel. So um, the other one, ones, I don't remember what, who the publisher was, but it was like the children's division of that publisher. So there's the guidebook. And let's jump into the cards. Here are the backs. There's almost like a, um, an Islamic imagery vibe to that, these sort of... I'm sure that's got nothing to do with anything. But let's look at the cards. And again, Jasmine Beckett Griffith, her beautiful, beautiful artwork. I love her so much. They're so stylized and so similar, but each one is still very different. Each one still has its very own face. And there's Snow White. There's the wolf. She stands for purity. So we have a keyword. Yay, I love keywords. And she, her... Her uh, image is sort of sort of in line with Disney. I mean, the, in Snow White, of course, she was dark hair and lovely white skin and beautiful red lips and dressed like a princess. That sort of neck thing they have in the Disney. Rapunzel. Liberation. Oh, they're so beautiful. The princess and the pea. Sensitivity. Do you hear the woodpecker? I got my window open. So you might hear birds, woodpeckers, geese, ducks, chickens laying eggs, the fan from my computer. Oops. Hansel, survival. So unlike her other decks, we actually have a male. Hansel is survival. Gretel is ingenuity. Look at that pair. How lovely. The poisoned apple, jealousy. Oh, my. Look at her. Wow. I mean, I, I, God, I love her artwork. And even though it does look youthful and it looks like, you know, oh, cartoony, I, I, I just really vibe to these images. The Little Mermaid is Sacrifice. Look at she's sacrificed her voice. Puss in Boots says Wit. So we have a critter, too. And look at his eyes. Carries. Cinderella is magic, and thank you for spelling magic, M-A-G-I-C-K, yes, ma'am. Why do we do that, um, all you witches out there? We do that to differentiate it from stage magic. 
from magic that is deception and sleight of hand and not the real transformation of energies and manifestation of desires. So here's Cinderella. Look at her pumpkin and holding the watch. Goldilocks. Entitlement. Oh my. And what was... Yes, magic. Duh. Goldilocks' is entitlement. I'll just come in and eat their food and break their chairs and sleep in their beds. I like that a lot. The tinderbox soldier. Ambition. I do not know this story. Look at the little pug. The Frog Prince. Intimacy. Thumbelina. Expectations. And some of these, I mean, I'm aware of the Frog Prince. I'm aware of Thumbelina, but I don't really know the story. Red Riding Hood. Rites of Passage. And there's another wolf. So Snow White... Interesting that there was that a wolf or was that a dog? Now I'm curious. Looks like a dog. Looks like Snow White's got a doggy friend or a wolf friend. I don't know. But this, Red Riding Hood, is certainly a wolf. She, she's really gorgeous too. Okay. There's her basket with her. The Goose Girl. Theft. Another one that I'm familiar with the title but not the story. Rumpelstiltskin secrets. So she's her secret is Rumpelstiltskin comes at night to spin the straw into gold so she doesn't get killed. Bluebeard taboos. Vasilisa the brave courage. I don't know that story either. Look how beautiful. Oh my god rich the little match girl choice the red shoes obsession hey kate bush singing in my head the red shoes she can't stop dancing <laughs> the 12 dancing princesses enchantment don't know that story either the sea maiden promises What came of picking flowers? Greed. Wow. I mean, look at the difference between these two images. Look at her. And look at her. So we can have stylized without having same-o, same-o. I just I love her so much. Tamlin Battle. I'm going to set that aside because that's my son's name. And I want to see what it says. That story, I know. Brother and Sister transformation that sounds like it might be a native american story snow white and rose red sister love the light princess ungrounded fairies words so that's just fairies i mean it's not a story per se i guess the Rose Elf Revelations. Look how beautiful. The Rose Elf. See, I want to read all of these now. The Day Boy and the Night Girl. Balance. The Princess Who Never Smiled is Healing. Sleeping Beauty is Awakening. Ah, oh, look at her. Verde Prato. Verde Prato wounds so a story from another culture obviously the juniper tree is deception the white snake understanding the snow queen is loyalty the children of lear voice there goes a woodpecker again fair brown and trembling Gifts. Wow. The Wood Maiden. Trust. Little Widow Goat. Dawn, the Golden Haired. Duty. The Nixie of Mill Pond. Memory. You know those Columbines? I love Columbines. The Wild Swans. Dedication. Fairy Ointment. The Sight. 
water and salt truth and that's the last of them right yes wow really beautiful so let's take a look at the book fairy tale oracle as i said this is my hands are shaking 2016 and we have the path through the woods your guide to working with the fairy tale oracle fairy tales are more than true not because they tell us that dragons exist but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten it's a quote by gk chesterton welcome to a realm of peril and enchantment where the cards you will shuffle lay out and read will share secrets truer than the truth because they are filled with the great and timeless wisdom of fairy tales Every card you choose will urge you to understand what is truly taking place. Every card will help you go through whatever it is you're facing. Every card will guide you out the other side brighter and more blessed. Princes will brave great suffering for the hand of their true love. Princesses will dance in enchanted slippers and girls will emerge from the ashes of the fireplace, changed forever by the touch of the fairy grandmother's wand. So let's like on the back of the box. For the use of this oracle will create great magics for you, dear reader. Through tales of wonder. What are fairy tales? What is truer than the truth? Story is a Hebrew proverb. Story is truer than the truth. Yeah, because it gets the essence of the story, the truth behind the details of the events. Um, so she talks about, as a child, the fairy tales that had um, an impact on her. Um as a child, I was haunted by the little match girl, feeling the cold as I read the story, searching for matches, matches so my soul could spark the eternal life, so I could reenact the transformative, transformative moment from the tale. I struck match after match, feeling my soul lift and fly. Of course, I do not recommend you do this. I got into a lot of trouble when my mother found the evidence of my fairy tale fascination, a waste paper basket set on fire. As a child, I cried for Hansel and Gretel, so cruelly abandoned, left out to die by their own father. I understood the stepmother was callous and did not care, but that their father was so weak and easily persuaded shocked me to the core. But that their father. As a child, I was full of wounded fury at the little mermaid for giving up her voice for the possibility of the love of a mere human. How could she? So she talks about how different things impacted her. Who wrote the fairy tales? The value of the darkness in fairy tales. I Again, with her other decks, like Shadows and Light, she definitely embraces the darkness. And I, I respect her for that. Is a fairy tale a myth? something going on sorry is a fairy tale a myth or a legend um when creating this deck with jasmine beckett griffith's beautiful paintings it was suggested to me that perhaps the deck could include several paintings that are of myths and legends but to me fairy tales are very particular they are stories of the journey of the soul and they grew out of folk tales. They have a particular place in our lives and they tend to stand outside the realm of the gods and goddesses, the deities referenced by so many. We are not rescued by gods or goddesses within these tales, although we may be watched over by them. The protagonists are very, very vulnerable even when they are royal and seemingly given every blessing they are possessed of a very human frailty and in them we see ourselves. Even those who are other, mermaid or fairy, are nearly always threatened in some way. Deities rarely have this vulnerability, though they do run the risk of being unbelieved in. So she's talking about why she chose to... Um, all right, I'm going to keep reading. In late, latter years, Hans Christian Andersen's tales began to reference Christianity, and yet they also embraced a pagan world, a world where nature spirits and the consciousness of birds and ants and flowers also had a part to play in the fate of the soul. So for me, I wanted to keep this deck very much involved with those tales so many of us have heard before sleeping and taken into our dreams with us. There is one exception, and that is The Children of Lear, a mythic tale from the sacred stories of Ireland. I decided to include it because the hallmarks of the fairy tale, the enchantment and the poignant voices of the swans were just too beautiful for me not to do so. Despite the children's father being Lear, the great god of the sea, they are unable to break the enchantment and their suffering brings us to an enormous amount of compassion and a sense of understanding of what the wild ones go through year upon year with so many winters and so many changes. It also gives us a sense of how fleeting the human world is, how to the magical ones our lives are quite small, fast, and fragile. After much soul-searching, I chose to include this tale that many Irish children have had told to them at bedtime as a fairy tale, yet which has deeper meanings about the division between the pagan world and that of the Christians. And now I want to read this card. 
and the story. Although fairies can and often do appear within this deck, this is not to say that a fairy tale must include an actual fairy. It is more that that realm of fate and the realm of fairy, that other world, is the world of the story. I think everyone who's read or heard a fairy tale has, has absorbed something very primal, very instinctual and very natural and very magical, even when it has been largely leached of its ferocity. Perhaps like homeopathic remedies, it only requires a faint trace of the fierce original story, perhaps told only by tale tellers about fires and hearths, or those settling their children at night, wishing for them only to stay abed, to have something of the soul of the story entering into us. It is not foreign to us. It is as if we have been waiting to hear these stories most of our lives. Most good fairy stories are about peril, the very true sense that we will at some time cease to live in the way we do now, and that there are those who would take this life from us. Boy, is that ringing in the middle of a pandemic. After such encounters, when we survive them, we will be rewarded. Life will be sweeter, and we will never take for granted again the beauty of life. That was worth reading. Fairy Tales Initiation and Mystery... So kind of like hero's journey stuff there on the importance of promises and your word in fairy tales. Ooh. Now, I mean, I want to sit and read this whole thing. I just also um, did a review of a tarot deck that has almost a novel in the front of it um, that I talk about being wankery. It didn't draw me in to read it at all. But on this, I am drawn to read. I'm not going to read it right now to you. How to Work with the Fairy Tale Oracle, Oracle, your guidebook, read it and take it to heart. So again, Lucy Cavendish shows herself to be very connected to spirit, indeed. How to use your Fairy Tale Oracle cards, the question, how to ask the question, shuffling and cutting, method two, revealing blocks, a note on reversed cards when using the deck. Um, reversed meanings are not provided to, for you. She says, consider the story and its meanings. Think of where you are resisting one of those messages. So if something reverses itself, looking at that's a block and how are you resisting? Caring for your card's energy. If your cards feel stale or a little different after being handled by other people, take each card, place the deck in order again. Yes, that is what I've always done with my tarot and I've done lots of bulk readings is put them in order again so they can rest. They're in their original order. Then you can smudge them or take them down to the seaside to bathe in the salt air, which is one of the most effective energy cleansers available. Some people prefer to have two decks, one for other people to handle for readings and one which they only touch. Always ask before touching another person's cards. Yes, good stuff. Caring for your readings, reading area's energy. Journal your readings. Card reading layouts, one a day. The leaping card. Yes, so that talks about a card flying out of the deck. The three times the charm spread. Past, present, future, the Celtic cross, the happily ever after spread, how nice with a fairy tale deck, 13 moons forecast spread, the fairy cross spread, north tells of your body, the south tells of your intent and motivation, the east tells of your mind's thought patterns creating and shaping, the west tells of your emotions, the center card is the heart of you, the soul stuff you're working with and integrating, transmuting through this issue. That's a beautiful elemental spread. Asking about individuals. And looky, she did this on Beltane. And I am doing this, I'm recording this a couple days after Beltane. And then there's the card messages. So we get the name of the card, the keyword, and then in italics here, um, as a little, there's a little section of the fairy tale. So let's look at this in terms of Tamlin. Um, which is the number 24 card. So we get the thing in italics, and then she talks about the themes of the story, and then there's a section for meaning, and we get bullet points. So um, Snow White is purity, the meaning triumph of the pure heart, rejection, rivalry, attack cannot change you. You are trustworthy and loving. Animals are naturally drawn to you. You will have many lifetimes before you die. You will survive great tests. You are good to all. Your kindness will be rewarded. Story attributed to the Brothers Grimm. So she, she gives attributions too. Thank you, Lucy. I love you. I wish you weren't in Australia. I'd love to connect with her. She's just, she got it going on. She's a witch. Okay, Tamlin is battle. 
If my love were an earthly knight, though he's an elf in gray, I would not give my own true love for any lord that ye have. So the story of Tamlin um, is about a young um, man who falls off his horse. He and his father are hunting. He falls off his horse. The fairy queen catches him and takes him into the underworld to dwell with her. And um, maidens go to the forest. I, I could go on for a long time. Maybe I'll just do a video on Tamlin. But maidens go to the forest, and they, if they pull a rose, he will appear, and, and ra you have to give him your cloak, or he'll ravish you and tell me those maidens didn't know and didn't go there with a specific purpose. At any rate, Janet goes and um, meets Tamlin, and he tells her that it is Halloween night, and he tells her his story, that he's not a fairy. And actually, she gets pregnant by him. But he says that it's, it's Halloween night, and on that night the fairy folk are going to ride, and that she can rescue him, and she has to go to him and hold him and wrap him up. And he tells her that he will change form three times, and that she, she just has to keep a hold of him. So he changes into a bear, and he changes into a lion, and he changes into a serpent, and he changes into a hot coal. So he it's more than three times. But um, when he changes into a hot coal, she throws him into the well. And then he emerges as a human. And, um, and then the Queen of Fairy watches this happen. And she says, if I had known this, I would have put out your eyes and given you eyes of stone. So she's a little pissed off at the end. So it's battle. The meaning, face the conflict with courage, hold true and hold fast, loyal, steadfast, true to one's own values, that she, you know, she, t Janet fights through her fear and she trusts him and loves him so she doesn't let go of him when he turns into these beastly forms. Devotion through the hard times, passing a test, rescue and redemption, coming home, honoring yourself, a time of fertile ideas and actions, help from a strong female, and the source is Scottish folk ballad and fairy tale. Lovely, lovely. And again, it, it, while she's telling these stories, three times Tamlin changes and three times Janet holds. She sprinkles a circle of earth and blessed water about him and brings him home. The tale of Tamlin is Scottish and no one creates heroines like the Scots. This may be called Tamlin, but it is Janet's story. It is a story of initiation, change, transformation, and reckoning, and freedom after imprisonment. The strong, fierce will of the heroine frees the man held captive by the fairy queen, even though he is forced to change and change and change, and Janet must hold fast, not letting him go, until at last he turns into hot coals. She flings him into the well, and he's born again as his human self. When this card comes to you, you're being reminded of your amazing power to free others by refusing to give in to overwhelming forces. Whew. There's a wealth right there in that one sentence. You are so strong and you can set an incredible example of courage and pride. For this heroine is proud, proud of her family, her name and her choices, even when they have seen her walk outside of what is considered to be the right thing for her to do. What does this mean for you? It means that despite the rules you have broken, you have done this for the right reasons. Your immense resolve and determination are an inspiration to others and always will be and are so powerful that you're able to inspire others to become truly themselves. When this card comes to you, be like Janet of the Tamlin story. Set others free through refusing to be intimidated. Stay true to yourself and to your own values, even when you walk in a strange land as Janet does, and know that when you pick a rose, magic can happen. Love is also at the heart of the Tamlin story, the refusal to discard a lover because they are in difficult circumstances, instead choosing to be strong and supportive. And that goes back to the refusing to give in to overwhelming forces. And in that moment when I read it, I was thinking about the forces of neurosis and the forces of trauma and the forces of you know, the, the behaviors that trauma gives birth to and refusing to um, give in and refusing to let go of people even when their trauma is overwhelming. So when this card appears, know you can stand by friends and loved ones and your support means the world to them, especially during a difficult trial or even a court case. You're a tower of strength and it will be appreciated and so much love will be yours. But do not do this for reward. You do this because it is right and because the love you have goes beyond good times. 
It extends into the nightmares that all humans experience throughout their lives, and your loyalty is a shining light for others to reach for in their darkest moments. Okay, I think that's going to be the message here, is just that you have strength, the strength of perseverance, the strength to keep hold through trauma, through trials, through changes, to keep hold and be true to yourself. What a, oh God, Lucy, I love you so much, dear. And I realized that this deck I got, I looked at it when, isn't that cute? And I put it away because many of these images, it really was like I was seeing them for the first time. Um, beautiful. One last word here. Red Riding Hood, Rites of Passage. Okay, I think I'm just going to read through the, the uh, keywords at the end here, just to give you something to be left with. The maiden comes of age, sexual maturity, stay focused and aware. Do not be deceived by appearances. Do not let yourself be groomed. <sighs> Think of the purpose. Have a, have a mature viewpoint with this situation. I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but obviously when you read through the cards, she's not going to tell you the whole fairy tale. She's going to give you the source of it so you can read it yourself. Like with Tam Lin, she gives you the gist and tells you the, you know, the crux of it that he changes three times and it's Janet's story and all that. But you're not going to get the actual fairy tale here. What you're going to get is her relationship to the tale and what she pulls out of it. And as ever, she's got her finger on it. This woman is magical. She is a witch. She's a priestess. She's a fairy woman herself. And I highly, highly recommend this one, at least of her decks. Not all of them are as good, but every single one of them that has been um, the collaboration between Lucy and Jasmine, damn, they're fabulous decks. Just fantastic. So I thank you for being with me and I thank you for liking and subscribing. I especially thank you for donating. There's a donation button down below. Please click that and send me a couple of bucks so I don't have to get a day job. <laughs> I really do appreciate your support, everyone. Comment down below so we can have a little bit of a dialogue about these things. If you have this deck, let me know what you think of it. I will see you next time. I will see you on Monday with another Tarot unboxing. Until then... Thanks for being with me. This is the Zen Witch. Blessed be.